question. Okay, we're coming at you from West Virginia. We're coming at you from somewhere. <laughs> we'll eventually get to West Virginia someday. Okay, but what we do have is definitely joke of the day, and I know that you love joke of the day. So where do rabbits learn to fly? Where do rabbits learn to fly? In the hair force. Because, you know, we have the air force, and so these are rabbits, and that's the hair force. I love Joke of the Day. I just think it's awesome. Okay, well, we're going to fly ourselves into the change of base property for logarithms. So we have our product rule for logarithms. It says that we can expand our logarithms if we have a product within the log. We can expand it. We can take the, the log of each of the individual factors and add those together. Or we have our quotient rule for logarithms. It says if we have a quotient or division problem within the log, we can expand that one. And we can take the log of the numerator, the log of the denominator, and we can subtract the two. Um, we also have our power rule for logarithms. It says if our, our, um, our log has an exponent, we can take that exponent, we can slip it down in the front as a coefficient. Or if we have a log that has a coefficient, we can slip it up as an exponent. And all of these allow us to simplify and evaluate our logarithms. Well, we now have a change of base property for logarithms. And what the change of base property does is it allows us to be able to evaluate those logarithms when we can't. Because when we've got um, a number, and let me get some definitions in here, some restrictions and, and criteria. So m is a positive number. We're not going to have zero. We're not going to have negatives for this um, number here that we're taking the log of. a and b are going to be positive numbers. So this a here that's going to become the change of base and this b here that is the current base, they're going to be positive numbers as well. So no negatives and no zero and they're not going to be a one. When we have this logarithm right here and we cannot evaluate it on a calculator because a calculator can only do common logarithms or natural logarithms. Remember, common logarithms have base 10, natural logarithms have base e, and when we have base e, rather than write log base e, we just shortcut it to lowercase cursive ln. But the point is, on a calculator, you can only evaluate that common log base 10 or that natural log base e. So if this base is going to be anything other than a 10 or an e, we can't evaluate it. But what we can do is we can change that base to a 10 or an E so that we can use the calculator to evaluate it. In order to change that base, what has to happen is you're going to change the base to either a 10 or an E, and then you're going to separate these out, and you're going to do the new log of this on the numerator, new log of this on the denominator. You're going to divide those two numbers that you get, and that will allow you to evaluate that logarithm with the base that you can't currently use. So like I said, it's useful for evaluating non-common logarithms that can't be evaluated on that calculator, changes the bases to ones that are on the calculator. So it applies to the common logs and applies to those natural logs. So let's take a look at, um, I've got three examples for us to run through. What's going to happen here is we're going to change the base and then I'm going to show you where those buttons are on a scientific calculator and where the buttons are on a graphing calculator so that you can use either one. Now I will preface that the graphing calculator is a better instrument in the sense of your scientific calculator, you'll have to get a numerator decimal rounded, you'll have to get a denominator decimal rounded, so you're already doing approximations there, and so your final answer will definitely be an approximation. However, your graphing calculator, you can punch in that numerator fully, punch in that denominator fully, do the division, and the rounding doesn't happen to the end. So the graphing calculator, like I said, is a better instrument, but I'll show you with either one, and you're going to be perfectly fine with either one. So I'm going to evaluate these log logarithms. Um, using either the common log or the natural log because notice it's base 6, base 0.3, base pi. None of those, I can't do any of them on the calculator. So I will have to change those bases and I want to round my answer to four decimal places. So I'm going to have to utilize my change of base um, property that says I'm going to change this and I can either use a natural log or a common log. In this first example I'm going to show you both and then with these I'll just do one. So I'm going to do my, let's do base 10 first and remember when it's base Base 10, I don't have to show it, but what's going to happen is I'm going to do base 10 on the numerator, base 10 on the denominator, and I'm going to take this number 17, put it up on the numerator, this number 6 on that denominator. 
Now what I'll do is I'll get the decimal value for this, write it up on the numerator, get the decimal value for this, write it on the denominator. These will be approximations. And then I will do that division, giving me an approximate answer. So let me now show you how this works on the graphing calculator as well as with the scientific calculator. I'll start with the scientific calculator first. So here is my scientific calculator and I've got a TI-30X. So what I have now is I'm going to do log and my log button sits right here. So I'm going to hit log, oh, need to turn it on first, there we go. I'm going to hit log of 17, finish that off. And I'm going to get a 1.23044.8921. Rounded to four decimal places, one, two, three, four. This will round up to a five because, or not round up to a five, it'll stay as a four. If this was five or above, this would round up. But if this is below five, so this will stay as is, 1.2304. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do log of six. And I'm going to hit enter. So log of 6 is going to be 0.7781525. Again, four decimal places would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that'll be 0.7782 because the number to the right is a 5 or above. So 0.7782. So now I'm going to um, write those on the, um, on the whiteboard and then we'll do that division. So again, the numbers that we had were a 1.2304. And on that denominator of 0.7782. And when we take a 1.2304 and divide it by 0.7782, we get approximately 1.5812, rounded to four decimal places. Now let me show you how the graphing calculator works so that if you prefer to use that one, again, it's a little bit of a better instrument, so um, we could skip over this part right here and I'll show you how that works. So here is my graphing calculator, and what I'm going to do is first enter that log 17. My log button is sitting right here, so I'm going to hit, there's the log button, I'm going to hit log 17 and finish that off. Now the beauty of the graphing calculator is I don't have to hit enter. I can go hit, hit divide, and then I'll punch in there log again of 6, finish that off, and the calculator will do all of that hit my enter key and there you see I have a 1.5182464.75 which again four decimal places one two three four would leave it as a two which is exactly the answer that we did have using our scientific calculator same thing so now I'm going to show you what if we chose instead to use natural log would that make a difference in our answer it's not going to, but I want to prove that to you. So again, using change of base, I would do natural log on the numerator, natural log on the denominator. I'll take this number, put it up here on the top, take this number, put it down on the denominator, and now I'm going to use my calculator to calculate natural log of 17, put it up on the numerator, natural log of 6, put it on the denominator, then I'll do that division and get my approximate answer. So just like before, I'll show you on the um, scientific calculator first, then I'll show you on the graphing calculator next. So here we are on the, on the uh, scientific calculator and my natural log button is sitting right here below the log button. So I'm gonna push natural log of 17 and get that value, hit enter. And I'm looking at a 2.8332133444. Very different than what it, when I had common log because I had a 1.2304. Now rounded to two, four decimal places, one, two, three, four, looking at the number behind. That's a one that's smaller than five, so I'll round it to 2.8332. Now I'm going to clear it out and I'm going to do natural log of six. Here again is my natural log button and six and finish that off and hit enter and I get a 1.791759469 again very different than the 0.7782 that I had previously four decimal points would be one two three four but notice that beyond that to the right that's a five which means this is going to round up to an eight so I'm going to put those on the whiteboard we'll do the division and you'll see that you come up with the same number so as I said before, with the natural log, I'm getting a 2.8332, 
and on the denominator I'm getting a 1.7918 and when we do that division we come up with the exact same answer of 1.5812 whether we use natural log or whether we use common log. Now, like I said before, I want to show you on the graphing calculator, especially so you know where that natural log button is if you're using that um, graphing calculator. So here's my graphing calculator, and my natural log button is going to sit, again, just below my log button, very similar to that graphing, or sorry, the uh, scientific calculator. So I'm going to hit natural log of 17, and I'm going to finish that off with the parentheses. And again, the beauty of this graphing calculator is that I can go ahead and hit divide, and it's going to go ahead and take care of all of it. Now I'm going to hit natural log again. And I'm going to do natural log of 6. Finish that off. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And the beauty is the calculator is going to do everything for me. So I have a 1.5812, because again, 1, 2, 3, 4, this being below a 5. On well, that 4 means that I'm going to leave it as a 2. 1.5812, and that is exactly what I got um, using the scientific calculator. So this is how change of base works, and we're going to do a couple more problems just to make sure that we feel very comfortable with this. So here, again, that 0.3 base, that doesn't work on a calculator. So what I'm going to do is change the base. I'm going to go ahead and go with a common log on this one. I'll do natural log on the other one. So common log, common log. I'm going to take my 19, put it up here take my point three and put it down here. And once again, I can use my scientific calculator, my graphing calculator, it doesn't matter either way. But if I use um, the scientific calculator, then I'm gonna get an approximation up here, an approximation here, do that division and come up with my answer. And once again, I'll show you both, uh, both calculators just to make sure we cover all bases. So here is my scientific calculator. And once again, my log button sits right up here. So I'm going to do log of 19 and get that number. I have a 1.2787 and 1234, this being a 5, this is going to round up to an 8. And now I'm going to do log of 0.3. So here again is my log button right there. And 0.3. And I'm going to enter that. And I get a negative 0.5228, da 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 da, one, two, three, four places, so it's gonna round up to a nine, negative 5.5229. Put those numbers up there, and then I'm gonna do that division. So, like I said, log of 19 is 1.2788, and log of 0.3 is a negative 0.5229. And when I divide those two numbers, I get a negative 2.4456, rounded to four decimal places. Okay, let me show you how that works on the graphing calculator one more time. And here's my graphing calculator. So I once again will hit log, the button right here. Log of 19. Finish it off with the parentheses. I'm going to divide by here again is my log button and it's going to be a log of 0 0.3 finish it off with the parentheses and hit enter and I got the very same number negative 2.4456 okay so let's take a look at the last example and we're going to do change of base again because there is no base of pi on any calculator so changing that base out, and since we did common log here, let's go ahead and go with natural log this time. So natural log on the numerator, natural log on the denominator. The 400 will go up on the numerator. The pi will go down on the denominator. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both my scientific calculator and my graphing calculator just to show you that I'll get the same answer either way. So I'll approximate here, round it to four decimal places approximate here, round it to four decimal places, do that division, and round that final into four decimal places. So let's take a look at what happens with that scientific calculator. So here's the scientific calculator, and once again that natural log button is right here. So I'm going to hit natural log of 400, giving me 5.991464547, rounded to four decimal places, we've got one, two, three, four, Behind this 4 is a 6, meaning this will round up to a 5, 5.9915. Now I'm going to do, again, natural log is right here, 
but I want an natural log of pi. My pi button sits right down here on my scientific calculator, so natural log of pi, and again we'll finish that off and hit enter once again, and that gives us a 1.14729886. Four decimal places would be one, two, three, four. Behind that seven's a two, it's, since it's less than five, that seven's going to stay, and a 1.1447 is what we'll get. So we'll put those on the whiteboard, we'll do that division, and we'll see what kind of an answer we come up with. So like I said, the numbers that we get, natural log of 400 is 5.9915, and for natural log of pi, we get 1.1447, and when you divide 5.9915 by 1.1447, you get about a five. 0.2341. All right, now let's test this out with our graphing calculator. And like I said, the graphing calculator is a better instrument because the approximation is not going to happen till the end. So here is my natural log button sitting below my log button. I'll hit natural log of 400. And I'll finish that off with the parentheses, but the beauty is I'll go ahead and hit divide. And now I will do natural log and my pi button. That one's a little bit more stringent. That one's a little tricky. Pi, notice it's in blue above my caret button. Anything in blue, you can access it through your second button. So I'm going to hit second and my caret button. And you can see, sure enough, it does put a pi in there where I want it to be. Now I'm going to finish it off with the parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that, yes, I am getting now a slightly different answer because I got a 5.23395, now 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to look at this 5 back here. Because it's a 5, that's going to round this up. But 9 rounds up to 10, making this 4. So my answer will be a 5.2340. 5.2340. And you can see that what we got was 5.2341. So there is a slight rounding difference. And like I said, that has to do with we were approximating back here with the scientific calculator. And we did not approximate until the end with the graphing calculator. But it's such a slight difference that um, either instrument will be perfectly fine to use. So I hope that this helps with the change of base property. And again, the beauty of the change of base property is it allows us to evaluate these logarithms that we see here that we would not be able to evaluate otherwise. We would be stuck right here in each of these three cases, but now we can get the decimal values for them because we now understand how to change into a base that the calculator can handle, whether it be a common base, common log of 10, or a natural log base of E. I hope that helps. Have a great day.